<laughs> Are you happy? <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> um, it's been so long since I've had interaction with people. And let me tell you, John said that, oh, this is my dream. It's not. It's not my dream. No one should stay home this long. <laughs> Actually, we did leave to go to Brahms to get ice cream, so I'm just kidding. Um, hi guys. So John asked me to film a Sunday school lesson for you guys, but I know that's weird for two reasons. One, you're watching on the other side of the screen and we're not used to this. We're used to like seeing each other in person and all that. But two, I don't teach your Sunday school class, so I don't actually know how it happens, but I do know there's discussion involved and we can't do any of that, so that's a little weird. But I'm going to try as best as I can to teach you guys, and then you guys can talk with your Sunday school teachers. Um, but before we get started, how are you? How are you guys? Um, how are you taking all of this in? What are you doing? What are you up to? Like we never expected our spring break to get extended when we were going on spring break. And then we never expected for, you know, everything to go online and for it to kind of be summer. So it's a very weird time. I, I'm, it's, I can't imagine how hard it would be for seniors um, and just all that senior stuff taken away. And just my heart goes out to all of you guys um, because you didn't get to say goodbye to your friends as well. So a lot of that is on my mind. Um, I mean, if you ask me, how have I been? <laughs> I've been fine. Um, you know, I would feel a little crazy and then I'd be okay. I would sleep a lot, eat, be okay, play games on my phone. So, <laughs> I don't know if John's going to leave this in the editing because I'm going to make him edit. <laughs> okay, so this first part, <laughs> I would have hoped, you know, we would get to interact. But since we don't, I'm just going to pretend and it's going to seem like really crazy. You know what? It's actually going to seem like a Sunday school Sesame Street slash Dora the Explorer type of thing. Because it's like, you guys will be talking to me and I'll act like I know what you're going to say. <laughs> okay, so um, heads or tails. I want you to think of that in your head, okay? Heads or tails and whatever it is, you're keeping that. All right, so I'm going to show you two pictures and one represents heads and one represents tails. So if you're thinking of tails or heads, you know how this goes. So if you do heads, this is your picture. What is that? Okay, if you do tails, this is your picture. Okay, now for those who did heads, now don't, don't go back on me. I know if you chose heads. Um, if you look at this picture firsthand, you can't really tell what it is. Right? You can't really tell what it is. It's like very abstract. And it's like, I know it's white, but I can't really tell what it is. If you do tails and you got this picture, you know very clearly what's happening in this picture, you know what's in the picture, and you might even know what city it is. It's Venice. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to show you the full picture, which is what I took on our honeymoon. And it looks like this. Okay, reason why I did this, now let me explain. For those who chose heads and you got that abstract white type of photo, you couldn't really tell what it is. Sorry, my phone's going off. Group me is going off, which means you Sunday school girls are messaging me while I'm doing the study. How rude. Um, but it but if you got the second picture and you see the people, you might have guessed right away that this is Venice. My golly, my phone. <laughs> All right, so if you got the second picture, it has very distinct objects and you can figure out what it is right away. 
And just like that, sometimes you might think, or you might call yourself a Christian, but from other people's point of views, they can't tell at all. You're like that abstract white wall. And they're like, I can't tell you're a Christian at all by your choices, by your behaviors at all. But then for other people who call themselves Christian, they're like the second picture where they can very well clearly they can clearly tell that they are Christians by their behaviors, by the choices they make, how they live their lives. And I thought that was a really great illustration. Now, if we were in person, all of us would have gotten in like a different picture and all that. But anyways, I just thought that activity was a really nice visual for us to know, okay, maybe you might call yourself a Christian, but other people can't tell at all. And so... Now we jump into the Bible study. I should pray. So I'm going to pray right now. <laughs> Dear Lord, this is really strange and crazy times for us to be doing this. But regardless, I'm thankful that the way we can stay connected with the technology that we have today, I pray with your message that our eyes will be open, our heart will be open to what you have to say and that we can really learn um, that we can really learn and take in the messages that you have for us. Lord, I, I pray that we take advantage of this time and choose to grow closer to you. I pray that we use this time wisely and that while these distractions are all taken away, that we can get closer with you as you intended. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so from what I hear, you guys are doing Ephesians chapter 2. It's like verse 4 through 9, but we're just going to go ahead and read 1 through 9. Let's read it together. I'll read it in my fun voice. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you previously lived according to the ways of the world according to the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit now working in the disobedient. We too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires, carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts. And we were by nature children under wrath as the others were also. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with Christ, even though we were dead in trespasses. You were saved by grace. He also lifted us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourself, it is God's gift. Not from works, so no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead for time for us to do. So this part, I need you guys to get a piece of paper. I know you're sleepy if you're watching this in the morning, but get a piece of paper and make two columns. In the first column, I want you to write of what you think it means to be a Christian and just write down your list. And if you need, just write down five. You might write down born again, going to church or whatever. Just write down your five and then when you're done, then continue this video. Now that you wrote down five, look at your list and look at some things that people can fake to look like a Christian. So for example, if you wrote down like going to church, listening to worship music, not cussing or whatever, those can be faked by anyone, right? But the things that you cannot fake is if you wrote down things like saved by Jesus Christ, saved by grace, renewed, forgiven from my sins, those kind of things. And it's a really big wake up call because it's like, am I living like a Christian on the outside, but I actually haven't received him on the inside? Food for thought. Okay, we're going to continue. Uh, I like how this worded it, so I'm just going to read it verbatim. It says, when we overcomplicate the gospel with rules and cultural expectations, we distract from Christ. Whew, okay. 
But when we oversimplify the gospel by only focusing on the parts we like, we undermine the cost that Christ has paid. There is a beautiful fine line that we have to come to. And this fine line on one end, you're thinking of all the things that you have to do to be a Christian. I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to read my Bible. I have to have quiet time. All this list. The thing is you can't earn your salvation. And that's something that we preach over and over because it's so important. It's so important that you get that. And then the other end If you undermine it, you don't know the cost that Jesus paid on the cross. In a couple of weeks, very soon actually, Easter is going to come soon. And what Easter represents is a time and holiday where we can reflect on what Jesus Christ did for us. But if that hasn't hit us, then it won't mean anything to us. So right now... My prayer for you guys, and I want you to stop this video if you feel like you need to stop and you need to be like, okay, I'm not there yet. Do you understand the cost that Jesus Christ paid for you, for your sins? This is so important because people skip that part and they go immediately to the part where they're like, okay, I have to go to church. I have to do this. I have to be nicer. I'm going to be better and all that. But no... No transformation can happen if you don't have him in your heart. If you don't have the Holy Spirit in your heart to help transform you, nothing can happen. It'll just be an annual resolution list for you to just become a better me every year. And that's the part where we really have to get clear. And and that's why we preach over it so many times because it goes over our heads. Like we don't understand it. And we might hear about it, but there's a difference between hearing it and actually getting it, actually experiencing it. So I'm going to pause there and now we're going to move on um, to verse 4. This is the most life-changing part of this passage. But God, but God, previously before it's contrasted by our sin, our nature is sinful. Our tendency is sinful. We're born that way. We're naturally selfish. We're naturally greedy. We're naturally sinful. Okay? But God, that's where everything changes. So verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with Christ, even though we were dead in trespasses, you were saved by grace. I basically grew up at church because my dad was a pastor and all these words are things that went through one ear, came out the other, and I knew how to appear like a Christian on the outside. But when this verse, when this particular verse and the truth that it carried hit me, it was life-changing. Like there's no turning back. It was life-changing. And that's where I really pray that This is what it means for you guys, that these aren't just a couple of words that you're reading, but that this will become life-changing for you guys. We were dead in our trespasses. We were walking dead, literally. If you didn't have Christ, you're spiritually dead. You're lost. But then with Jesus, we become alive. With Jesus, we get a second chance. We have this wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit, but we still have this body and this world that we're living in. And so that's why it's a daily fight. In fact, in Ephesians later, it talks about the spiritual battles. And I say that so many times because I think we need to be reminded of it. I'm going to close out with this. Verse 6. He also raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus. There's going to be a day where we get to be with Jesus. We get to be where our forever home is. My question for you guys is, is this impacting the way you're living your life day to day? Knowing that someday that we're going to be with Jesus and he's going to ask about how we lived our life, the choices that we made. Is that going to change the way you're living today after you watch this video? Is it going to change it at all? As Pastor Harold said last Sunday, let's walk 
a worthy life. So even though all this change is happening, let's not be influenced by that. Let's be the influencer. As children of God, we should live a life that stands so differently, that reflects what we have received in Christ Jesus. And I pray and hope that it does that for you guys. Um, as I end this video, I would love to know what you've guys been up to. Uh, send a photo to John or friend, send a photo to the group me, whatever it is. I will see it either way. Um, yeah, that's really it. Okay, let's see. Okay. All right, guys. Bye.